so what I would like to start off by saying is that I personally being involved and incarcerated at Hampton Roads Region Jail um, had a direct connection and, and coordination and link with um, the prison ministry, um, the good news ministry. And I personally know the level of testament that it, how it affected my life and how those things helped. Um, when you're in a confined situation like that, there's like, there's not a lot of um, access to resources externally. Um, it's extremely limited internally. And having access to, number one, correspondence with um, humans, for that matter, um, because we, we deal with um, officers or, or caretakers, if you will, but having that connectivity with, with the, the spiritual community, number one, I think it provided a wholesome level of mental health balance because, you know, you literally are, you're trying to drown out the noises of, of things that's around you and you are trying to hone in on your own voice. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that those were things that were very important to me because it prevented prevented me from dealing or having any type of psychosomatic episode or anything like that um, approaches. And also it gave me a greater sense of learning the Bible and, mm-hmm. and, and how, you know, God was operating within my life. Um, because when you're in, when you're in a, a part, place of confinement, of incarceration, there's it. And you and you realize the biggest thing once you're there, and you realize that you you can't leave, like that's mm-hmm. the biggest uh, sort of like reality shock that you you like you're like dude I can't leave. So being able to be there and having um, a connectivity with an outside source, even the uh, ministry gentleman that will come into the to, to the jail system to be able to communicate with you and share you know God's good news with you, God's good word with you, um, really makes a difference. It really does make a difference for your mental state, mental stability, and for those that are really desiring a greater relationship with God, that you have com- common camaraderie with individuals that you totally don't know. You have, they're from different ethnicities, different backgrounds, different cultural settings even, and you're able to find that common link, which is God mm-hmm. and, and, and Jesus Christ being our, 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 our savior. And mm-hmm. understanding that, that there's more to Hopefully, not everybody's going to absorb it, but hopefully, we we'll give that those individuals a paradigm shift to realize that they can truly have rehabilitation. God afforded me that discipline. He was like, "Dude, here you go, sit down," and and I think the upbringing that I had of having the knowledge of Him already, um, but even more so, being able to share it with other men in there, they may not have been uh, a believer in Christ or a believer in the Bible or believing in the Word, but hearing that word, hearing that thing, because at that point in time, you're clamoring for anything. You're looking for any level of hope. Yeah. And you, uh, you already mentioned it a little bit, but you're talking about almost like a mentorship role that you were playing with some of the other younger men while you were incarcerated that happened fairly quickly, uh, upon your incarceration. And, um, even now that you've been out for a while, you, you've uh, started a ministry. Uh, you have a really strong emphasis on mentorship. Could you just talk to that a little bit? Explain sure. why, why you felt that was such a need and, and what drove you to this ministry you're involved in and share a little bit of that. Being inside of there really gave me like a true sense. Like I, I could hear God's voice more so, whereas I saw so much dysfunction. Mm-hmm. And I would hear repetitive redundancy of, oh, I, this is my third time in here, or this is my fourth time in here, or I've been coming here since 1979, mm-hmm. or I've been here since 95. I'm like, wow, um, I need one time. Um, <laughs> but for me, what really showed yeah. me was that, that showed that, or boded that there was a lack of direction. With the grace of God, truly, um, I, I take no credit for on my own, but with his direction, I started a nonprofit organization called a uh, non nonprofit 501c3 certified a uh, registered um, nonprofit organization called THRLT, which stands for Trust, Honesty, Respect, Loyalty, and Communication. And with what we what I do within THRLC is I, I teach and train the youth that are not necessarily college bound and felons coming out of incarceration um, that are that are trying to reacclimate themselves back into society. Um, and THRC's mission is to train, develop, 
and provide life coaching to individuals desiring to work in the HVAC, plumbing, or electrical industries, creating a paradigm shift for individuals whose lives have been torn by the fabric of society and helping individuals to rebuild and move forward for success to lead productive lives. Putting the spiritual connectivity into the, the physical uh, componentry um, and the word of God says, if a man doesn't work, the man doesn't deserve to eat. So if you are able to actually put those principles and carry those principles into real world, this is real world. This is real facts. As young people say, big facts. This is big facts. This is real stuff that you could be doing right now. Um, you could be learning the trades. You could be learning these different skill sets. You could be learning these different functionalities of things that are happening. And you, in turn, within a short period of time, could be a qualified tradesperson. It's cute. So as, as I uh, seek to uh, meet with and, and teach the inmates uh, that are currently at the Hanson Roads Regional Jail, my emphasis with them is twofold, just like you talked about, is that we have to affect both our, uh, our mind and our heart of where our affections are, where our affections should be towards God, then our, our personal discipline of just... Of just and right, right because, because the word of God, I mean to cut you off, but as the word of God says, as a man thinketh, so shall he do. If yeah. you want to understand a man's action, understand where his thought process is. Yeah. So that's, that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of this process. If these young men and, and women um, can learn to change their thought process, the paradigm shift, that spiritual and thought process will coincide and you have success. You have, you know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You, you have, yeah. you have the, the, the opportunity to really um, have an abounding effect upon everything that's going on yeah. in your environment. Hey, thank you so much for your time and uh, we'll, we'll be in touch. All right, brother. You be safe. Yes, sir. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, sir.